Hey guys, what's going on? I'm here today to kind of make a, a recap video of what I think of the Yield Max funds and, you know, kind of go through what they're about, what the risks are, and so on and so forth. In the beginning, when I, you know, maybe a month or two ago, I made a video talking about Tesla in particular, and that was... Again, when I knew, I'll, I'll say less about the fund. I was just getting started. So I'm just kind of making an updated video of how I feel about the Yield Max funds um, overall and how I feel about, especially Tesla, you know, one of my biggest holdings. So, and as always, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is just, uh, you know, fun and entertainment. So take it as you may. All right. So I'm on the Yield Max ETFs website, and again, when as mentioned, I kind of mentioned this in my first video. The website, the mobile website, at least, kind of weak. Uh, just like the display, black and white. You know, it's nothing too appealing. So it doesn't look like they're trying too hard. But anyway, we're not talking about the website. I guess at this moment, we're talking about the funds. So right now they have what? One, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, four, fifteen funds that are available for purchase. Tesla and OARC were the first two funds launched, and that was, I believe, November of last year, and they have added nonstop since. Um, and not to me, and you know, in my opinion, not all these funds are worth it because. Again, these funds, what they do is they sell covered calls on the underlying stocks of these funds, which as you can tell, you know, pretty much by the name, you can guess what the underlying stock is. So, and I'll get into the, you know, the ones that I, that I like as we go down. So, OARC is, you know, the underlying stock is ARK, A-R-K-K. That's a... An ETF itself, which invests in, you know, up and coming tech companies um, that, you know, are hopefully going to go two, three, four, ten 10x, right? Uh, and right now it's, a, you know, it's pretty uh, volatile, but the distribution rate is 31% based on the last payment, which is okay. Tesla underlying stock is Tesla. This is really the most popular ETF in this fund, and right now it's a 49% yield um, versus what it was last month. I think it was 70, 70%, 60%. Aptly, underlying stock is Apple. Um, not as volatile as the others, as you can tell by the distribution rate of 14%. This, um, I own this. I'm actually probably going to sell out of it because to me, it's not worth the risk, right? 14% yield worth the risk of their strategy not not so much plus it's not a game changer nvidia underlying stock nvidia nvda is a uh, you know a chip company more volatile as you can see they did pretty good last month 52 percent based on the last distribution i own that one and i'm keeping it amz underlying stock amazon distribution rate 26 percent kind of volatile um, this one I own and I'm holding again, as long as they can stay above that 20, I think 20%, I don't really have a number, but above 20% is pretty good. Uh, Facebook, I'm sorry, Phoebe, which underlying stock is Facebook, AKA meta distribution rate, 17% based on the last payment. Um, I sold out of this one. I just, again, it's, it's less than 20%, not really worth my time. GUI underlying stock is Google. Uh, they're paying 17%. Again, I, I owned it. I sold off. Not worth it. Uh, Nefli underlying stock is Netflix. And this one's a little more volatile. It's actually tanking as of late. But um, to me, it's worth it because it's, you know, it's paying a 29% distribution rate. Kony underlying stock coin has not made a distribution yet. But it's more volatile. Coin is more volatile than Tesla and NVIDIA. So I'm expecting this 
distribution rate to be around the 70% mark, 80% mark. Um, could be more since the first payment is one and a half months worth of activity. So that first payment is not really a monthly payment. It's a month and a half payment. So it may, uh, the way it reflects maybe more than what the normal distribution rate is going to be. MSFO, underlying stock, Microsoft. And this one to be determined. I sold out of it because I'm going to wait to see what the distribution rate is. Um, Because I bought these stocks. I bought Kony, MSFO, Zomo, you know, others. And I'm holding these. And then, sure enough, they made the announcement of the September distribution. I'm like, why bother holding these if I'm not going to get paid till October, right? So anyway, I got out of them and I, I used that money to make a distribution in September. Disso underlying stock, uh, Disney, and not really that volatile, honestly. They have not made a payment yet, so there's no rate to represent. Not a fan of Disney lately. Um, love going there, but um, haven't been there a long time. But uh, it's just, this is one I won't own. It's not volatile enough and I wouldn't invest in Disney anyway. Zomo, underlying stock, Exxon, a uh, little, little more volatile, but I think their rate's going to be around 30%, um, but I'm not here to guess. It's not, this video is not about guessing the dis- distribution. I'll save that for another time. Uh, I'm actually working on a spreadsheet that I could share on my Discord that would show the uh, estimates of these funds and the future funds actually need help on Google Sheets. If anyone's good at it, please join the Discord and reach out. Uh, JPMO, J, uh, underlying stock, JP Morgan, no distribution. Net. Again, JPMO and AMD just came out. AMD, underlying stock, AMD. AM, AMD is volatile, so that's going to be like uh, NVIDIA. So, however, they're in the same sector, so it's kind of like, do you want both? Do you want one? Do you want... Uh, I don't know. Decisions, decisions. So... Here's, again, continuing on the website, yield max ETF seek to generate monthly income by selling slash writing call options on single company stock ETFs. So it's a risk. What you're used to, what everyone knows is QYLD or, you know, other XYLD um, or RYLD. These, these funds they sell covered calls on an actual, you know, index, right? So it's much less risky because the movement of an index is much, you know, less likely to tank in a day or a week versus an individual fund. However, the volatility of a full index is much less than choosing an underlying stock such as Tesla or Nvidia. Hopefully that made sense couple other things on the website they have a phone number <clears throat> they're still kind of new so you can actually like you know when you reach out to them they get back to you again this mobile website sucks um this shows a gross expense 99 percent. we'll get into that though if you're interested you know in uh communications and announcements you could sign up here which a lot of people have been trouble even getting anything so may not even be worth it. I signed up. I got an announcement email like the first month and then they stopped. All right. So what else? So let's click into one of the ETFs, Tesla, everyone's favorite. Uh, again, the distribution rate is 49%, which people consider low after getting used to 60 to 70%. You know, what, what kind of world we live in when 49% yield is low? Um, distribution is monthly, 30 day yield 4.9 and the distribution schedule is located here. Very, very odd, uh, terrible spot for it. But even Jay mentioned that in one of his videos, it's like very hard to get to surprisingly it hasn't been fixed though. Um, so this just shows the declaration date, which is the date they announce the distribution, the ex dividend date, which is the date you can no longer qualify for the distribution, meaning you have to own the ETF prior to ex dividend date in order to qualify. Record date is 
basically when administratively they log all the distributions that need to be paid and payment date is the date you should see it in your brokerage account. And from what I hear is some brokerages wait to the end of the day, end of business day or the beginning of next business day to reflect the payment. And I use TD Ameritrade, which shows it actually like the day before. Like when it's on the Monday, the payment date, I see it the weekend, which is great. But I'm hearing Schwab does not do that. And I'm converting to Schwab in like 40 or something days. So I'm pretty pissed about that. They better get their crap together, man, or else I'm going to switch brokers. But anyway, for the next declaration date, it's October 5th. They'll announce what the next distribution is, which is also the same day or the last day you can own the shares. I like how they do that. So they announce it. Then you still have time to buy into it to qualify because that's what happened last time. They announced it on September 7th and MSFO, Coconi, all them, no, nothing, no no payment. Um, so I sold and I bought Tesla. I bought, you know, a couple others. So I do like that, that they do that. So... Anyway, that's where you get the distribution schedule. A lot of people ask me about, uh, you know, the dates and the schedule. So there it is. Every fund, that spot. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, yip-yap going on here, but I'll get to the documentation, which really is what they have to abide by. Um, what's their investment objective? Is to seek current income. That's the first objective. The second objective is to seek exposure to the underlying stock. A couple things here. Uh, Tesla, as I mentioned before, inception was November 22nd. Expense ratio, 0.99%, which is considered high, but not, not when they're doing all this work, man. Selling options, I know they say weekly, but it's basically daily. As I've been sharing, the daily movement, the daily trades... They are very active, and I love it. Um, this just shows the NAV, which, you know, it's a net asset divided by shares outstanding. Premium discount, NAV versus price, blah, blah, blah. What do you care about? What do you care about? Distribution detail. This just shows the historical payment activity. Um, you know, they started out paying 99 cents, 90 cents, 90 cents, 82 cents, all the way down to 44 cents, back up to 80 cents, up to a dollar, then 83 cents, and then the last one was 58 cents, which everyone was pissed about, but it's still good. Um, top 10 holdings area, well, holdings area, which will show you the you know top 10 holdings. Intraday trades download button shows you the current trades. As you guys know, I cover that daily. Um, you could download all the holdings for, um, you know, each ETF, which as you can see, you know, Tesla, right now they have many holdings and I'm probably going to cover this in more detail tomorrow if I have the time, but within this, you know, there's a synthetic, you know, synthetic shares, which is a sell put by call which is 25,760 plus minus. Um, the, uh, there's two treasuries, there's one for cash, and then the rest are short cover calls, which that's really where they make the premium. Again, I'm not really gonna, gonna get into that today. That deserves a separate video. Today is just about yield max review. And then these are the brokerages where you can buy Tesla, I'm not sure if this is completely updated, but Charles Schwab, everyone's favorite, SoFi, I don't even know what that is, I've heard of it, Robinhood, E-Trade, it's surprising me that E-Trade just seems like it's not that popular, but I'm surprised that they haven't get bought out already, TD Ameritrade, which got bought out by Schwab, Fidelity, uh, Vanguard, which their app sucks, and BNY Mellon, I don't know who they are. And interactive brokers. Okay, that's it. That's, that's it for the fund. So what I wanted to talk about was the prospectus. 126 pages of information that is key to owning 
uh, you know, these, these uh, ETFs. Lucky for you, I did something similar for what I did on QQQY. Did this last night real quick. And I highlighted the important things. So Yield Max has a prospectus for these, uh, these guys here. I don't know why Berkshire is on there, why BRK, because I don't think they plan on launching that. They're also missing a bunch, honestly. So this is this is last updated November twenty first, twenty twenty two. I mean, they gotta update this. So, but I don't think much is gonna change when they do. So I'll just go over this one. I'm highlighting TSLY because we just talked about that. And I'm also hiding highlighting Apple because that's the first one that's gonna come up. So when we get into the detail of the strategy, it'll talk about Apple. But keep in mind, the strategy is the same for all of these ETFs. Scrolling down, obviously, table of contents. I highly recommend you guys go through this. I know it sucks. I know it's a lot of pages. But it's just good to understand what to look at. You know what I mean? You're putting your hard-earned money into a fund. You should know what they're doing. Uh, management fee, as we mentioned, 0.99%, which is considered high for an ETF. However, this is a covered call ETF that is very, very active, as I mentioned. They sell weekly covered calls, but they do trades almost daily. I, it's been a while since I haven't seen activity on a day. Um, but as I mentioned, I'm, I'm just highlighting the important things that you guys should be aware about. So... As I mentioned at the top, this section here talks about Apple. But again, keep in mind, this is for all the funds. So what does the fund do? They seek exposure to the share price returns of Apple. They do that by uh, you know, positioning themselves in a synthetic position, synthetic long, they call it. Current income from the options premiums. So, yep, they sell calls, sell covered calls. They get premium income for that. And a limit on the fund's participation and gains, if any, of, you know, price returns of Apple. When they sell a covered call, they have to choose a strike. They ch typically choose it a little above the current price. And they are able to take gains up to that price. Every, anything above that, they actually um, would have to pay the difference because they're, they're not going to they're not going to make those gains. That is the risk of selling covered calls. Why invest in the fund? Um, oh, yeah. One thing I want to mention, the fund advisor is Toroso Investments. Sub-advisor is Zega. Same people as QQQY. Okay, so why invest in the fund? Why would you want to invest in this crap, this high risk, right? Um, it seeks to participate in, the, you know, it's, a lot of this is re repetitive, so I apologize. But at least I'm not drinking coffee today. I'm not sniffing. So no complaints, hopefully, in the comments about that. The fund seeks to participate in a portion of the gains. Yes, we know that. Fund seeks to generate income. Yes, we know that. Okay. Here we go. Fund strategy is subject to potential losses if Apple share decrease in value. I'm sorry, all potential losses. So if you buy... Um, Apple, a, which is APLY, and Apple goes down 20% in one day, Apple will go down 20% in one day. So just keep that in mind. They will make, they will sell cover calls on the way down. So keep that in mind. But um, most of the losses you're going to be subject to. The fund does not directly invest in AAPL. This is kind of covered when I talked about the synthetic position. The they sell covered calls on synthetic shares. They don't actually physically buy Apple, which means, as you can see by the next bullet, you are not entitled to Apple dividends. But you're getting a massive distribution on some of these. Where do they do the options contracts? They do it on the Flex Exchange. Um, the big difference I, that I know at least of about this is they cannot... You cannot be assigned early. You can only be assigned at expiration. And this is good when you have in synthetic positions because you don't physically own the shares. You cannot deliver. When you sell covered calls and you get assigned, you have to deliver the shares. But 
luckily, they won't be assigned early, so they can wait until the expiration date to get out of their call should they be assigned, you know, if they left it. Um, flex options are also exchange traded, but they allow for customizable terms. Again, I guess that's one of them. Um, what else? Synthetic covered call strategy. Again, I don't want to bore you guys to death. But a synthetic cover call strategy, the fund does not own the underlying security. We kind of covered that. But basically replicate 100% of the price movement of the underlying stock. All right. What else? Synthetic long exposure to AAPL. This is, again, we're talking about Apple, but this is the same thing for everything, for all the funds, which allows funds to seek, you know, participation up or down. Yes, we know. Covered call writing. Yes, we know. And they own most of their money goes into u.s treasuries u.s and that money is used as collateral against these you know these options so what do they what why do they do that they earn like five percent in uh you know annually which is not a lot but it's additional income that you can get credited for um what else combination of the long call options and sold put option provide the fund with the investment exposure equal to approximately 100% of AAPL. That just talks about the synthetic. Um, this part is important, covered call writing. They do short calls, which is where they make the premium, most of the premium come, uh, which is approximately they'll do 5 to 15% above the current price. That way you could take advantage of the gains, some of the gains. Uh, that this blue part is what I love about Yield Max because QILD and the others don't really do that. So there's not much capital gains um, that you can take advantage of. Uh, as I mentioned, U.S. Treasuries um, are treated, you know, used as collateral. So there it is. You don't have to listen to me saying it because obviously it's right there. Okay, the income is in the form of options premium received from such option sales will be the primary influence, oh, primarily influenced by volatility of AAPL. So what does that mean? If the stock, underlying stock is very volatile, then the premium income would be much higher. Apple is not that volatile as compared to Tesla, which is why their distribution was so much lower. So, in my opinion, I'm only going to invest in more volatile underlying, you know, the underlying stocks. So because I'm going to get, you know, higher premium income, the risk, you know, of owning this, these ETFs is based on the underlying. But if you're taking all, you know, a pretty high risk and you're getting 12%, is it worth it? No. Why would I own aptly 12%, which is based on one underlying fund when I can own SPY I? which is based on an index. I'm getting about 11% from SPY, sometimes 12. All right, this chart is very important. This is what their holdings are about. These first two sections, you know, I'm not gonna really get into it, but it's the synthetic. As I mentioned, purchased call options, which is buying a call and then selling a put option. So both at the money, both have the same strike, both have the same expiration, and that's a, that's the synthetic position. They add to this as they get more investors. Sold short call, these are the five to 15% out of the money calls where they generate income. US treasuries, again, they invest in treasuries. And that's pretty much the end of it, minus the definitions. So what are my thoughts? I want to give you my thoughts again, not financial advice, but what are the risks? What are my thoughts? Um, I don't think it's as risky as people say, but I don't think people, most people understand how it works because I hear a lot of people saying, oh, I hope, you know, Tesla's going to blow up, you know, have good earnings or something. It's going to blow up next week. That's not good though. These funds, what they need is slow gains or to stay flat because if you know, when you sell covered calls, it's a bearish play, believe it or not. So if the stock is $100, just say for Tesla, it's $100, and you sell a covered call for $105, 
They're paying you income in order to do that. I'm sorry, in order to do so because you're committing to selling Tesla at $105 by this date. And the buyer of that contract is saying, okay, I think Tesla's going to go up. So if Tesla goes up to $110, then you're kind of shit out of luck. That $5 difference you have to cover. So when they say limited potential gains, when they sell these short, you know, these weekly covered calls, you do not want it to go up drastically in one week. You want it to slowly go up 1%, 2%. You know, again, they say they sell 5 to 50%. That's just to cover them, but they're really doing like 5%-ish. So you do, like when they sell covered calls, you want the underlying to stay flat and you want it to move or move up slow. If it goes down a little, that's okay too. We just don't want it to drop like a tank, right? Because when you sell covered calls and it goes down a little, that's okay. Because say they sold the cover call at 105, uh, stock price is 100, right? For Tesla or whoever. And it goes down to $95. They could roll the 105 strike into a 100 strike and make additional premium because they think it's not going to go back to 100. So on the way down, Tesla will drop that 5%. However, Tesla may drop only 3% because they made 2% additional income by rolling it down, if that makes sense. So when they say you have full exposure of the decline of the underlying, that's true, but they make money on the way down. They can sell covered calls. They can roll that covered call downward and make more premium. So, and again, that's on the way down. I talked, I just talked about on the way up. We don't want it to go above the strike. We want it to stay within that range. So we want it to slowly go up. So those are the risks. I mean, the risk is the underlying stock movement. You want it to stay volatile. However, you don't want it to tank bad. You don't want it to, you know, jump up massively too fast. You want it to stay slightly bullish, very volatile or flat, right? You want it to stay flat as well, flat or, you know, slightly bullish, right? You want it to either not move or you want the price to go up a little. That's that's basically it. Um, so that's my review on yield max. And I appreciate yield max very much because they, they have changed the game. Rex shares is now coming out. A competitor. I hope they have a different payment date. That'll be awesome. And then um, you saw the QQQY video I made. You know, they have other funds, which they're set on the index, but yeah, I love it. High, high yields. And, you know, your typical YouTuber, your typical channel, CNBC, they're going to say this is high risk. You know, most people are just, you know, they're keep they're playing it safe. Or, you know, or they're getting paid by someone who the hell knows, right? This, of course, it's high risk, but not everyone is rich. So we can't live off 5% yield. A million dollars, 5% yield, you're making 50000 Nobody can live off $50,000 unless you move out of the country. You know, I'm talking about, the, you know, in the US, nobody can live off 50000 So if you have a million dollars and you're making 50%, now we're talking, baby right? If you average 50%. So that risk, sure, bring it on. I'll take that risk. I'm not putting all my money in yield max. However, I am putting a lot of my money into it because I am willing to in order to change my life. I want to change my life. I want a second income. I want to retire early. I don't want to wait. I don't want to put everything in a freaking retirement account and just say, oh, I'll have 2 million in retirement. I'll make 4% yield. Yeah, no, sorry. I That was my mentality for a while. And then th th something came out like yield max. And I, you know, I really like it. I like the strategy. Of course, of course, it's risky. Do your own research. Please do your own research. Um, but um, anyway, if you enjoyed this video, um, let me know via like, via comment. I think I just qualified for that partner thing on YouTube. 
So I may actually make some money from these videos, which will be pretty cool. I don't know how that works, but we'll see. Um, but anyway, um, that's it. And um, time to go to work. Later.